And sometimes you may think that momentum, either getting started or stopping, is a problem with writers. And it is, so we'll talk about that. I Should Be Writing, Season 17, Episode 52. So hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty, and I'm excited to be streaming live right now because it is my one year anniversary of being a Twitch affiliate. Why specifically that? Because in the older way we uh, numbered things before the coming of the seasons, this two episodes ago would have been the uh, 600th episode of I Should Be Writing, which doesn't count all the special episodes and all of the NaNoWriMo episodes and all of the Patreon-only episodes. But for specifically I Should Be Writing, it was number 600. And I just let it sail on by. And then I thought, okay, well, I remember I started streaming last summer, so maybe I'll just celebrate my anniversary of being on Twitch. That was July 23rd. So missed that. And so then I tried to figure out when I became an affiliate, which uh, is today. Does that make sense? Maybe it was earlier than that. Anyway, I know for a fact, because I looked at my email, that I made affiliate on um, August 5th. What is today? I don't know. 5th, the computer says so. 5th. And uh, I couldn't have done it without people showing up and hanging out. And so thank you for that. It's... uh, Twitch has made me about $200 in a year, something like that, (laughs) which is, you know, it's nice to have, you know, a dinner out arrive, but uh, I'm going to keep working towards partner, of course, but uh, for now, I'm just grateful for y'all showing up and hanging out. All right, so um, what we do in these streams is we talk about writing. I talk about writing and what I'm working on for about 30 minutes, and then we turn it off for the podcast listeners, and then we do more direct interaction with the stream. If you want to be part of this, uh, I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Honestly, the time may be changing, but I'm not sure. I haven't figured that one out yet. But it is going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. Twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer. So what I've been working on is uh, trying to finish my novella. And over the break, I started, I made another outline, and that helped out a lot. I tried to do a little bit of writing, but I don't know who I'm kidding. Um, Cameron Hurley was there, and so she and I had a couple of writing dates. But uh, overall, I didn't get a lot done. But this morning, I got up and I started working, and I... I knew what was going to happen, and I knew that I had to raise the stakes here and there, and I uh, wanted to keep writing, except I realized I needed to clean up and do a stream. But I looked, and I had about 3,500 words, which is a lot for me. That's a whole lot. So um, I'm pretty proud of that, and it's funny because I was also wandering around going, I don't know what my affiliate-versary, big, fancy, important stream is going to be about. And uh, luckily, I looked in the Discord, which is available to uh, Patreon supporters and Twitch subscribers. And, um, let's see, who brought it? Ah, yes! Uh, Valerie, Kids Are Asleep, brought it up. Um, How to Overcome the Initial Resistance Doing a Thing. And this is honestly one of the hardest things it's it's really it's a very ADHD thing it's a very creative person thing the um the first step is just really difficult and if you were around podcasting 
around 2006 or 7. You might have seen this, but uh, Zay Frank was doing one video every uh, weekday for a year. And it was good. I mean, he like did songs and did the cuts and he never stuttered and he never blinked. And so he'd have, he'd be just like staring at you and, and talking. And it wasn't like he was talking intent about something intense. But this is just how he would be. Never stutter, never blink. And it was very interesting. Why am I talking about this is my by far my favorite episode of his. It's uh, the show. Is the one where he talks about that first step of zero to one. And why it's the hardest. And it's a very good question because... We build up walls in the strangest of places. A lot of people like to think of, if they picture a writer having writer's block or trouble producing, they imagine them sitting at the chair, staring at the computer, or if you want to go retro, a typewriter. But in reality, we don't get, we don't even, we don't even get there. Or if we get there, we're not staring at the blank page, we're staring at Twitter or email or Reddit or something. What are the kids looking at these days? Tumblr? You're a kid, come on. Snapchat. Snapchat. <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. Instagram. Instagram, yes. Thank you. So, I'll talk a little bit about my um, one New Year's resolution. I mentioned it back in January, I think. But, I mean, it's August now, so might as well reiterate. I realized uh, last summer when I was... Oh, no. Summer before that. It's like last year didn't even happen because not a lot happened personally last year. It's just like one big line. But anyway, um, last time I tried to do a running program, usually a count. Cal- You know, the couch to 5K is the good one because apparently you can go from being sedentary to running uh, five kilometers in uh, eight weeks. So there are several. And I was doing one and I realized the hardest part was showing up. Like, that's where all the resistance was. I don't want to put on my running clothes. I don't want to put on my shoes. And there were even times I would put on the clothes and the shoes and not actually go outside. I just walk around and an hour later wonder why I feel uncomfortable. Well, it's because I'm wearing a sports bra and I dress for running and I never ran. And so I decided to boil all of my problems down to the fact that I just need to show up. Because other aspects of me or my brain or my personality will take over when I show up. I trust th- that I will, um, I trust that I'll write something. I trust that if I can actually get my butt out the door, I'll go somewhere. I'll get some sort of exercise. And so I think Boiling it down to just show up was really helpful for me. So, because when we want to do something, when we say we want to do something, we put, we can think of a million reasons not to do something. It's too hot, it's too cold, um, I'm sore from yesterday's workout, the dog's or asleep and we shouldn't wake them up to go outside or I should do laundry first or I should check Twitter or I should send that email and these are all the things that we think of like hurdles we have to crawl to jump over to get to the actual job and really it's show up because when you get over that difficult part of showing up then There's nothing else to do. That's really it. It's like, while I'm standing here in the middle of my house, in my bathrobe, metaphorically, 
there are a potentially hundreds of things I could do, including writing, including exercising. But once I sit down at my desk, that cuts out a large number of things. When I open up my word processor, that cuts out a whole bunch more. Sil silence my phone, lock up my devices, whatever. And same for exercise. Well, once I put on the running clothes, that sort of limits what I can do. And then when I go outside, it's very limited what I can do. So don't think of it as not getting momentum. Think of it as you're looking at all the things that you can or should do and that's getting in your way. But once you start removing those, which is also known as, you know, showing up, stepping a little bit closer to the task at hand, once you're there, there's not much of a decision to make. You, you just do the work. And living in a digital age with a million devices, there are still distractions that can happen. But they will be greatly diminished once you finally get to where you need to be physically to do the thing. It's, we put up our own walls. I was listening to something. I'll try to find it and put it in the show notes. It's a, it was a podcast, I think. And someone was saying that when she wanted to do something, even if it was easy, the past mistakes or times that she failed or times that it didn't go well, each made a brick on top of the other brick. And so you, you were building this wall in front of this probably easy thing to do, but your failures and maybe just when it didn't go well or when you ran out of time or whatever, and then you get a little wary. So, I was lucky today that I hit the other side, which was um, lots and lots of writing momentum. I felt good. I'm going to be going over word count with this story, which means I have to cut, which I've never had this problem before. It's strange. And you know what's funny is, I wrote down a structure for the show, and I didn't follow it. So I'm going to back up a little bit and get to the good news part because someone emailed me with good news. So even if y'all have nothing to say in the chat, I still have one little bit of good news. If I can find my phone. There it is. So um, let me know your good news in the chat. And later, if you want to um, email me, I can say it on the next episode. But for me, my good news is I had a vacation and it was awesome. And I got back and wrote a lot. So... I'm feeling a bit more positive about things. Let's see. I'm going to find it. I'll find it. Note to self, have this queued up before we start streaming. So Firewriter beat Hades on Monday for the first time without turning on God mode, which is something I've never done. So congratulations. That's awesome. Let's see. It's coming. Oh, I have other good news. Um, I won't say who because I don't know who's actually going to do it. But um, I contacted a number of people asking if they'll take a look at my book for a blurb. And um, most everybody said yes. And those who didn't expressed great uh, remorse that their schedule would not allow it. So I sent my book out to be blurbed. And I'm terrified. So that's funny. That's good. That's good news, right? Yeah, that's good news. That's, that's progress. I just don't know. Yeah. I'm just scared. It's, it's the, you know, you can't be happy. If your last book was a flop, you worry that your ne next one's going to be a flop. If your last book was a success, you worry that the next one won't measure up to the last one. So I'm very good at it. Finding the worst in every situation. 
Okay, I had to check to see if I could use the name. I tried to... If you ever want me to keep you anonymous, say it in the beginning so I won't say, Billy says, blah, 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 blah. Don't say my name on the show. Edward says, Yesterday I finished perhaps the most difficult draft of a novel I've ever written. I struggled with the pressure I was putting on myself to write something that would be publishable. It was only after you talked about the Ira Glass advice that I freed myself from the pressure, and I do believe I have a practice novel that I've been practicing on since December 2014. And that is awesome. Finishing a draft is... finishing Just finishing a draft is difficult. Sometimes we get mired in the middle. Sometimes we get to the end and go, well, that, that that's not right. That's not how the story should end. What have I done? Where do I have to go back and find where I screwed up? Um, Ever goes on to say that I get really sad when I finish a draft. And this is something we've talked about a couple of times that I want to uh, normalize because... So many creative people feel this, but people don't talk about it. And so we always wonder, what's wrong with me? And that's when you finish something like a major project, you're going to feel a little let down. It's because where you've been putting your mental and emotional energy for so long, there's nowhere for that energy to go. You'll find something. You'll find something new, of course. But at the point, it's like... You know, like when you run a lot and you stop running and your legs are like, oh, I can rest now. And then they turn to jelly and you flop, flop over. I think I'm talking about running a lot because I didn't run this morning. So I convinced myself. I think I'm going to convince myself. So congratulations, Edward. Um, Well done. Good job in not worrying about it being publishable because if you write... um, If you write three unpublishable novels, the fourth one has a good chance of being publishable. If in the same time you struggle to make one novel publishable, then and, and you spend the same amount of time, it's you're not going to learn enough from experience to make it happen. Unless you are a unicorn who can publish your first thing, but um, those are unicorns. So that is my good news. Did I miss anybody? Okay, I did miss anybody. Um, Let's see. Beat Hades, Starred Green, finished a very rough outline. Finally, that's awesome. Are you a plotter or a pantser? Because if you're a pantser, then that's a huge achievement. If you're a plotter, then that's a good achievement. But, you know, rough outlines are hard. They're just hard. Whatever. Uh, Val, Kids Are Asleep, finished a short story for an anthology and turned it in. Hooray, I hope they like it. That's awesome. Also, uh, Val is starting Mass Effect 2 tonight. Uh, She streams under the Kids Are Asleep, and she's always doing games that I either love or want to play. So it's a lot of fun watching her and the, the decisions she makes in these, you know, huge branching Bioware games. Catwood is almost at 30k on the new manuscript. That's awesome. And Cinema, after 20,000 drafts, I think I have a solid query letter. Awesome. Jasmine got positive kudos at work. Is that Matt WBL? Anyway, uh, my good news is I sold another nonfiction book pitch to my small press publisher. That's amazing. That's great. I, too, am waiting on blurbs for my first short story collection. Very stressful. Yeah, it's just... And knowing from the times I've been asked to do blurbs and knowing how it falls by the wayside because of everything else I have to do, I'm just kind of worried. Jasmine's getting better at going with the flow in life, which is after the past 18 months or so, that's huge. So much good news this week, yes. I gave my, myself permission to write and now have the beginning of a story outline I feel good about. Great. Oh, Plantser, I forgot that's a thing. Starry Green, that's right. Half Plotter, half Pantser. Okay. So yeah, I the momentum thing is, it's a struggle. It's, it's probably a struggle for everybody. 
if you don't have ADHD, I'm sure you can come up with your own hundred things to do rather than um, write the work. I know people who have fretted over their first paragraph, wondering which word processor to use, wondering which font to use. It's There are so many little things you can self-sabotage yourself on. You can just... I can't do this until I'm sure I know I, my margins are right. It's just, yeah. So begin eliminating the things, the other things. And you can do that by narrowing your opportunities. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I'm not sure. Like I said, when you get a little closer and show up to the actual event or chore, or whatever you want to call it. What you're doing is you're shutting out the other possibilities, the other decisions you have to make in life. And um, that's, that's a step you can take. I'm not going to promise the whole device problem, basically because I haven't fixed it myself. But... Getting to the chair, showing up for work, is probably the best way I have of looking at that. So I'm going to go ahead and end this right now for the RSS feed. If you're hanging around in the chat, uh, we're not going to stop. So if you want to hang out in the chat and talk directly to me, we stream on Twitch for free twitch.tv slash mightymer and if you want to hear everything I'm saying to the chat then support at patreon.com slash mightymer and uh, you can get the full downloads of everything we talk about and until then you should be writing do I do this, to myself? this podcast is brought to you by my patreon supporters if you would also like to join the ink stained fabulists Go to patreon.com slash mighty mer. on that shelf on the spine of a paper bag. A paper bag.